high school, Mr. J had us read a book called The Cask of Amontillado or something by Edgar Allan Poe. It was about a guy whose whose friends would would uh, one friend in particular would would just rib him and, and and just get under his skin with his jokes and things like that. Part and it just built up to a point where he he invited him over and got him drunk, chained him up in his cellar and built a stone wall in front of him slowly and uh, let him starve to death basically in his cellar in a little dungeon he made. I mean, that shit just happened at work, honestly. That shit just happened. When I worked as a car hop at Sonic, I was like a fucking whipping boy. I did everything. I fucking was running food out like a crazy man while these bitches sat around on their phones and did nothing. And that just, you know, that, that kind of thing just continues as long as you let it happen, man. Through, through, on to Burger King, I was trying, you know, trying to move up and shit, but it just wasn't happening. The management was a mom and her son, and they try to fuck with me just like this. And, you know, like, that's when, that's when I first started to see, like, you got to push back against that kind of shit. So, I mean, I fucking did, and it didn't matter to me because I knew that shit does not matter. And you know, after that, I started to look for look look for better opportunities. I I would peep, I would try to peep immediately uh, what kind of situation I was going to be in that working environment. And if it wasn't what I'm into, I'm fucking out of there. You don't treat me like I'm not a grown ass man. And even onto my my time in jail, you know, that's a big thing in an institution like that. Is like we're all grown men. You're gonna treat me like a grown man or there's gonna be repercussions. And there are repercussions to fucking with people like that. I'm a grown ass man. You're just not gonna do me like that. In jail I had many situations where someone tried to try me and you just gotta stand your fucking ground and let them know that you're, you're a grown ass man and you're not gonna be swayed, you're not gonna move from your position. Cause that's life. And if you just let people do that shit to you, then that's, that's just gonna keep continuous, a fucking vicious cycle. So you gotta break that motherfucker. Fast forward 2020, I was the general manager up there at Wayback Burgers, loving my job, having a great time, you know? And then it slowly starts to dawn on you. Like I started to see little things, you know, with the owners there and shit like that. Like I'm okay with running a shift with barely anybody. I'm okay with all the shit. But then it comes to dishonesty and I'm like, I gotta get out of here. And then COVID hit, boom, that changed everything. Like I seen that I'm just I'm just there to be a body for them. They don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck about my my pregnant lady here, you know. And I, I got to be here. I got sick. Then you know I'm I'm still coming in. Where are the people that own the place? Nowhere. So I got the fuck out of there, right? I started working other jobs, doing shit, and I realized, damn, this shit ain't working out. I'm gonna have to go back to a restaurant. So I got hired at that fucking French place, and I fucking think it's the best employment opportunity that I ever had. I mean, we have staff meals. This is beautiful shit I'm learning. And that cycle just continues, man. I start to I start to see that like I'm a I'm a little whipping boy. If there's a mess, oh, it must have been black dust, you know. And people people were seeing it there who weren't who weren't getting whipped, you know. They're seeing me get whipped. People in my exact situation with my job title being treated way differently than I am. And they would see they would mention it to me every day you know that's when i started pushing back and then just the situation like the baby's about to be born we're trying to buy a house all the shit's going down and olivier fucking literally puts his fingers in my mouth and puts some spice in there to make a point about some fucking dish i should have fucking handed him the crispiest right hook he ever heard of but i sit there and i take it because i'm thinking i can't lose this job I'm not gonna get the house. My baby's not gonna have a house to live in, you know? So I'm just, I'm just sitting there. I'm taking it for weeks. I'm and I mean, Olivier's is a fucking asshole and Paskey wasn't the best to me all the time, but I really respected Paskey and I loved him. And that day that they, they decided to fire me because I was working a second job on the side and Chef Paskey fucking killed himself that day after leaving the restaurant. And they don't give a fuck. The restaurant just keeps moving on like he was never there. Like he wasn't the executive chef in that bitch making moves, making everything happen. Okay, so today, I've had enough of this shit. All right? At this fucking shitty, stupid job at Brahms, I don't get, I don't give a fuck. 
not gonna sit there and fucking say crazy shit to me. Because I will go the fuck off. And that's what the fuck I did today. And I'll fucking do that shit again because you're not gonna say no crazy fucking shit to me. And I'm gonna be at work fucking, what, uh, Tuesday morning and you ain't gonna say shit. Everybody come up to me and apologize because they don't know what the fuck's going on. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. You ain't gonna do that shit. And if, and if shit ain't fucking changed, guess what the fuck gonna happen? That, that shit would totally, be funny as fuck. Be and then I would have let that three too. Like right when I'm supposed to leave, cause ain't nobody fucking paying attention. We back here getting our asses whooped. That's why I'm smacking. The manager, he, the other managers were there, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, people are busy. I mean, not the girls when they showed up at two. They were just hanging out, back there on the phone and shit, and talking. And like they just walk right through, you know, the kitchen while we're getting butt fucked and nobody's, we're not.